optimistic updates is basically updating the UI optimistically while waiting for the API request to finish and give you a result. Now, let me explain. Whenever we make any changes on the front end for any action, most of the times we're either making an API call or communicating with a database or using server actions, whatever it is, but basically we want to persist the new state of whatever we're doing. Whether that's adding items to a list or updating an object or anything. And usually that can take from a few milliseconds to seconds or whatever. And that doesn't really give us a good way to make the UI and UX great for our apps. Now we can use skeletons while we wait for the data to be fetched or add loading states like loading spinners or whatever when submitting a form. Now optimistic updates have been around for a while and most of the websites use it but recently React came out with their own use optimistic hook. Optimistic updates have a few things to consider. We want to make sure that we update the UI ahead of getting the response but we need to think about what if the response fails? What if we get a different object or whatever it is? So that's what we're gonna be talking about today. And I'm gonna be showing three ways how we can implement optimistic updates in our React apps. With everything in React, we can do most of the stuff ourselves. React can provide hooks and whatever, but we can always do everything manually. And that can work fine for your use case or whatever. And I'll show you how I've implemented this for a simple to-do app that has optimistic updates that handles all the different states and the errors and basically anything that can go wrong. Now I have here a Next.js app which has like a few pages basically and I've, imp I've implemented optimistic updates myself here basically with the help of ChatGPT. But let's go through this code and kind of explain what's happening. This is what the app looks like. I have a button, an input and a button, which basically is the text and the new um, and adding a new to do. And then I render the list of to do's below. Now the, the list of to do's is basically um, the use state. And now because I need to track whether this is loading or not, I have a loading new state. So this is true when I click the submit button and I have the text input ref, which basically is to grab the text from the input. Let's actually look at the handle add to function and this is basically my function when the submit button is clicked. Now the first thing I'm adding the set loading to true. This disables the button so nobody can click it while we're adding a new to-do list item. I'm grabbing the current to-dos so this is the state of my current to-dos before they do anything and then I'm setting the state to include the new to-do with a pending true. I'll come back to the pending in a bit, but this is basically performing the optimistic update. I'm updating the state in the UI before I even make the API request. Cool. So then at this point, the UI will have the new to-do already in the list. And this will happen instantly without waiting for the request to come back. Then I'm making the request to the API. If the response is not successful, I'm going to revert back the to-dos to my snapshot of when I press the button. So this will remove the optimistic to do that I added. If it's successful, I'm gonna create a new array with the snapshot I have and the response from the API request. I, I could just filter here and remove the pending state, but I think the, the response from the API or the database will be the source of truth every, all the time. So this might include other stuff. And then I have uh, a catch and a finally. So in the catch, I'm reverting the, if there's an error, I'm basically reverting the to-dos to the state they were before I clicked the button. And finally, I'm setting the loading to false so that I can click the button again. Cool, that's all the logic. And let's see how that works. So here you can see the to-do was grayed out. And that's basically why I use the pending state. And when I'm rendering the list of to-dos and checking if it's pending, then I'm adding opacity 50. If it's not pending, don't add the opacity. And that basically means is when I add a new to-do, we can see that it's trying to add the to-do or whatever. So the user knows what's happening. Now, let's see if I reject this. So if something happens and my to-do is rejected, you can see it's being trying to get added then because it's erroring it gets removed you can try again 
So this is the thing the to do gets removed when we get the response from the API. And just to show you that once the to do is not grayed out, that's actually coming back from the back end. I'm gonna change this object a little bit. Even if I try something else here, we can see that now the this is what I get from the backend, and this is what I'm gonna persist in my to do's state. I hope this makes sense. It's pretty simple if you think about it, and this is a very simple example. But if you have something more complicated, this can get very complicated very fast. For example, if you have any logic when you receive the response to like check something or filter or whatever, or you need to update. If you have a list of users and you're updating one user and then you need to sort the users or filter them or have another object needs to be updated, this can get very complicated very, very fast. So that's why I would recommend using the tools that React or other libraries provide. Cool, now let's move on to use optimistic. Now I couldn't really get this working to be honest, for some reason, the optimistic to do just doesn't work, but in theory, this is what happens. So we still have a state of to do's and this is the to do's that are in line with the backend. Then I have the optimistic to do's and this is using the use optimistic hook. Now here we can pass the state of to do's. So all the logic that happens, like if we, Whenever we receive new to do's from the backend, we need to update the optimistic to do's and all of that stuff. Or what if there's an error or whatever. That all happens in here. And checking the loading state and any logic is in this hook. And then we use the optimistic to do's to render out the to do's on the front end. Now, the way this would work is in the handle lot to do, I'm adding the optimistic to do before I make the call. When I get the call, when I get the response from the call, I'm updating the to-dos, my to-dos, because now I have a response from the API, I can update or just keep them the same. And this will make sure that I have the new to-do and it's not pending. And whenever the to-dos get in updated in here, this should update the, optim the optimistic to-dos as well. Now, again, I couldn't get this working, so I couldn't really demonstrate but in theory that's how it's supposed to work then the third option is using react query now i do like using react query especially if my backend is a graphql server react query works great with that so this might look like a lot more code but it will make sense in a minute now i have some functions here to fetch to do's and add to do's and this is basically just mocking a server because I don't have a server. It waits for a second, then resolves with the to-dos. And then the add to-do basically is uh, adding a new to-do to a list that I just keep in here. Cool. So now the actual logic, the way we use use query is this is for fetching the to-dos and then this returns data, which are going to be the to-dos that it's going to fetch. And this is the function that I showed above. And then we have a mutation, which means um, mutating our persistence. So it has the add to do function and all the magic about optimistic updates happens in here. Now the way the React query works is it keeps a cache of the query and we can pass keys like this. So this is the keys of, of to do's and this is gonna match in the cache to make sure that when you get new to do's from the server it's gonna update the cache and the cache is a, one of the good things about the react query because it doesn't make the request to the api every time for example if you have some kind of bug in your code and your component updates a lot and it tries to make multiple api calls in a second react query is gonna catch that and just give you a cached response which is great now because we have cached results so the optimistic update here is updating the cache to include the new to do before we receive a response from the api and this is how this would work now here you can see when i load i have a this comes 
from the server i have a already have a to do and if i try to add new one you see i use the same pending state here it's grayed out and then it's and when it's actually saved so let's go to the function and here we're ca cancelling all all queries with the key to do so th what this does is make sure that we're not fetching new to do's while this is happening once we've done that we grab the current to do's before we make the update so this is just a snapshot of the current to do's it's, it's using the cache uh, with the key to do's then we optimistically update the cache adding the new to do and i'm adding a new spending true here so i can gray it out on the ui and returning the previous to do's back to the on mutate function and that's basically implementing the optimistic updates now we also have on error so this if there's an error this is gonna set the to do's in the cache as the previous to do's and that's why here we return the previous to do's and here if there's an error with the mutation it's gonna set the to do to the previous state and on settle we invalidate queries so this means that now we can fetch new queries and this will actually refetch the, the to do's back from the back end once we've done the mutation i hope this all makes sense but the, the when i click the button i'm mutating the to do's and this uses that add to do function and it goes in here does all the changes it needs to do now let's just demonstrate if this is rejected You see here it's grayed out and then it goes away because it's not being added. It doesn't exist when we refetch the to-dos. I think doing everything yourself is a great way to learn how stuff works. It's great to dive into stuff like that and understand how it works. And then you can implement stuff like this if you actually need it. But I would always recommend using the packages and libraries. Of course, they need to be trusted packages and libraries. We are, everyone's trying to make web development easier. So these hooks actually make development easier in my opinion anyways but depending on your use case you choose whatever you see fit but once i learned how optimistic updates works i now actually see them in all the different websites and try to look at the network tabs and see if it's actually doing an optimistic update or not i mean before i thought every website has great servers and the responses are back in like 50 milliseconds because i would never see a loading state or anything on the big websites but now I see they're using optimistic updates. But this gives you a lot of options of having a great UI and also making sure that the user knows that we are trying to add an item to a list or this is trying to save or persist the data and it gives great user experience. My name is that's been it for this video. Thank you very much for watching. Enjoy the rest of the day. Happy coding. Bye.